morning, everyone. It's uh, good to see you uh, both in person and online. And uh, we're blessed this morning to have uh, Reverend Dickie Hinton to uh, preach for us this morning. And um, I hope that you will keep him in your thoughts and prayers as he delivers the message. And uh, let us all uh, bow for prayer as we prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, uh, we pray this morning for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit to be upon us as we celebrate another day that you've granted us. Uh, we thank you for the privilege of being together as the people of God, both in person and online, to celebrate your goodness and your holiness extended to the human race. And I pray that you pour your Holy Spirit upon uh, Dickie as he brings the message this morning. I pray that you would help him to share with us what you've laid upon his heart in order that we will grow in our discipleship. And uh, we pray that you will be honored and glorified through our worship, not only today, but every day. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? It is, so, it is so great to see you all. Whether you're worshiping with us in person or watching us online, welcome. Welcome. Let's all stand together, get our voices ready, clear our throats. As always, let's get our hearts wide open, our souls wide open, and let's worship God this morning. Let's give Him everything we've got. Here we go. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong Everlasting God, the everlasting 
trusting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God, you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like Sing with me how great is 
our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. Every day you give us is a gift. There are no words that are good enough to describe and no words that are adequate enough to describe how much we need you. There are blessings in each day of our lives that you give us and most of the time we don't thank you for them. We're sorry for the times that we do that and when we ask your forgiveness when we fall short. Thank you for how you are always present with us. Thank you that you love us when we don't deserve it. We have so many things to thank you for. We know that all that we have, you have provided for us. Thank you, God, for loving us so much that you sent your only son to die on a cross for us. And the most important thing that you want from us is to worship you. You created us to worship you. It is what we were all born to do. Help us to always, always remember that. Today there are many requests that are on our hearts. Specifically, we ask for your healing for Renee Smith and Beth Davis's mom, who is in the ICU. We ask for, heal, er, for healing hearts for Catherine Stevens' brother's family who's passed away. And we pray, especially for Pastor Stevens' mom, that you would bring healing to her. We lift all of our loved ones up who are sick, God, you are their creator. We love them, and it's hard to see them suffer in any way. And as much as we love them, God, you love them more. We pray for healing for illnesses. We pray for healing for ones who are suffering suffering spiritually. We pray for healing for ones who are suffering, suffering mentally and emotionally. Speak to us, Lord, and if there is something we can do to lighten a burden for someone, please show us. We pray that you continue to show us the needs of your people. And if there's a prayer request that may be too hard to talk about, we pray for healing for that too. We thank you again for the way you are always present with us. You are a great God. You are the splendor of the only king. You, cre- you, clothed, you are clothed in majesty, wrapped in light. You are our timekeeper, the beginning and the end, the three in one, the lion and the lamb. You, your name is above all names, and you most certainly are worthy of all of our praise. We worship you, Jesus. We love you. And as your people, we pray that you will al- we will always be found living a life that is pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God.
Amen. That was beautiful. You may be seated. Hey, boys and girls. Mr. Doug here today with my best friend, Sally. And Sal... What? what? What is wrong with you today? Why do you always want to bring up topics when I am trying to video the children's moment? Huh? I mean, it, it just boggles my mind. You want to talk about the cat. What? When are you going to, to let that go? When are you going to learn to, 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 to be more... In, uh, okay, one minute, okay? Okay, what, what did the cat do? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, I tell you what. Boys and girls, I want you all to help me here. Who do you think is more important, you or the cat? So you think you're more important to the cat. Okay, I tell you what. Here, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something really quick here. i got a pen here, and I'm going to write your name down on a piece of paper. All right, I wrote your name down on a piece of paper. And there it is. Look at that. There it is. It says Sally. Look, I'm going to put it right over here. Sally. Now, and now I'm going to take another piece of paper, and I'm going to write down the cat's name. Yeah, I know how to spell cat. Let's see, there it is. And show it to the boys and girls. And there's the cat. Now, according to you, you're more important. Okay, so so if this is you, and there you are, and this is the cat, then as we see, you're more important, aren't you? Because you're bigger. There you are. You're bigger. So 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 the cat is bigger. I know you're bigger. So are you sure about that? Well, okay. I just want to make sure. So you, so you think that you're you're more important? I don't know about that, Sally. I mean, putting yourself before other people. I mean, let's let's see again. Let's look at that again. What do you what do you mean something's wrong? The cat's more important now. The cat's bigger than you. Huh? Huh? But you like to think of it this way, don't you? You like to think that you're much bigger than the cat. Oh yeah. See, boys and girls, we like to think that we're better than other people. Or we think that we're more important than other people. And then they think that they're more important. But here's the cool thing, Sally. When God looks at us, see, here we are. We think Sally's more important. We think the cat's more important. But when God looks at us, we're basically the same, aren't we? Huh. Huh. Yeah, that was a cool little trick there. But don't that get to the point? God sees us all the same. And we should try to do that too. We should see people as the same as us. No one's, no one's above us and no one's below us. Everyone's the same because God sees us all the same. And He always will. I hope that you enjoyed this little moment with me and Sally. I hope you learned something. You need to make up with the cat. You and the cat are the same. It doesn't really matter. And that I hope that you all are having a good summer. We hope to see you in church. We love you. We know that we pray for you. And we'll see you later. Bye. You really like that. Well, I'm glad you did. Maybe you and the cat will... Y'all show you how to do that. And you can show it to the cat. Maybe the cat and you will get along for once. All right. Love y'all. Bye. Good job, Doug. Now it's that time in the service where we get to give back. We get to give back. And if you're watching online, there's a slide on the screen now that shows uh, different ways that you can give. And let's remember something from Proverbs 18, verse 16. It says, giving a gift can open doors. Giving a gift can open doors. When we give, when we give to the church, we may never know what that money goes to. But I can promise you that when we give, it is opening a door somewhere. It is absolutely opening a door. So today, as we contemplate what to give, let's be reminded. Let's be reminded when we, when we let go of that, when we give it to God, that it is going to open a door for somebody somewhere. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God. You truly, truly are a God of abundance. And we praise you for that. You give us so much. 
You give in ways that we never recognize, and we thank you. And we give back to you today, God. And we know and we have faith that what we give is going to open doors. We know that. We know that because you are absolutely awesome. God, continue to keep showing us how to use our gifts. Keep pushing us to use our gifts in ways that bring your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. that I hid away I lay it all at your feet From the corners of my deepest shame The empty places where I've worn your name Show me the love I say
thanks for making me follow that. <clears throat> Very good job, thank you. I'm going to try to do something that I probably shouldn't do. And no, I'm not going to shuck the sermon from earlier because then I'd be in trouble. But I want to talk today about something maybe or maybe not you've ever heard from the pulpit. And that is what I call golf cart spirituality. Now, a lot of you are golf fans, I, I would assume. Maybe not, since you're here right now. Um, if I could get the sound booth to, to put the open on this middle TV, I'd feel a whole lot better doing this sermon. I'm kidding. Okay, you're going to have to lighten up for this sermon, okay? <clears throat> Hear these words of scripture from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes into the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. May God add richly his blessings upon the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this word. May we pray. Lord, now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Malcolm was a man with a terrible, terrible temper. And Malcolm found himself one day playing a round of golf with his pastor. After leaving three straight putts on the edge of the cup, Malcolm exploded, maybe not literally, but you know how that goes. I missed, he screamed. How could I miss? And with that, he took his putter and he heaved it into a nearby lake and he kicked a wheel on the golf cart and then drove his fist into a nearby tree. Well, the pastor was a little shocked at this. He said, I'd never seen such a terrible display of anger. Don't you know that God doesn't like it when we're angry? I have heard that there are angels whose one assignment is to search out people who express their anger so ferociously and to send lightning bolts from heaven and burn them to a crisp. You can judge for yourself the spirituality of that. Now Malcolm was embarrassed as they continued to play and heeding the warning of the pastor, he decided he would uh, try to control himself. However, on the last three holes, his putting failed him again. And when the last putt veered off to the right, just in front of the hole, Malcolm went crazy. I missed, he screamed. How could I miss? And he broke another club over his knee and threw it as far as he could. And he kicked up several large clumps of dirt on the edge of the green and once more drove his fist into the hand of a tree. Suddenly, the sky grew dark. An ominous cloud passed over. There was a clap of thunder and an awful burst of lightning. I 
And the pastor was burned to a crisp. And eerie silence followed on the golf course. And all that could be heard was a quiet voice from heaven. I missed. How can I miss? Now, I, I guess my own golf cart inspired this sermon because I like to ride around in my golf cart. I ride it to, if there's a view somewhere that I can reach, I try to take it and go to that view. I like to visit folks with it when I'm going up and down the street. I like to go to a good spot where I can watch the moon rise or watch the sunset. I even like to uh, use it as a means of trespassing. I ain't got caught yet or arrested, but I like to go see what something is, and I try my best to go at a time nobody else is around. But I also like to go and somewhere quiet and have time to reflect upon the grace of God in my life or the state of my faithfulness to God. I have discovered that my spirituality is, is kind of goes along the same as the gears in my golf cart go. You know, sometimes my spirituality is flat out going in reverse. And sometimes it's just sitting there in neutral. And other times, it's moving forward. Let's go in reverse first, okay? Leroy Imes, in his book, The Lost Art of Discipleship Making, describes how one spring his family was driving from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa, Florida, and as far as the eye could see, orange trees were loaded with fruit and he stopped for breakfast and he ordered orange juice with his eggs and the waitress said, I'm sorry, I can't bring you any orange juice. At first he said, I was dumbfounded. And she said, well, we can't give you any orange juice because our orange juice machine is broken. He then made a comment, he said, we were surrounded by thousands of gallons of orange juice in the trees. The problem was these people in the restaurant had become dependent upon a machine to get it. Christians are sometimes like that. They may be surrounded by Bibles in their homes, but if something should happen to the Sunday morning service, would they have nourishment for their souls? Or would they be like this restaurant and say, sorry, the machine's out? Many Christians, I'm afraid, get very one track in their faith and sometimes that causes us to go in reverse of where we need to be have you ever tried to drive very far in reverse speed it up a little I go crooked I get right and left confused when I'm looking back right I go slower just so I won't crash and burn. But sometimes I do that. I think I'm up to two garage doors. And that's not where I want my spiritual life to be. I want my life to be moving. And my spiritual life to be the source that moves me. There's a little song that we all know, I think, most of us that are familiar with all the, the hymns that are in the 
the Methodist hymnal. Here's a little play on one, and I bet you recognize it. Backward Christian soldiers fleeing from the fight with the cross of Jesus nearly out of sight. Christ, our rightful master, stands against the foe. Onward into battle, we seem afraid to go. Backward Christian soldiers fleeing from the fight with the cross of Jesus nearly out of sight. Going backwards doesn't sound so hot, does it? It's not where we want to be in our spiritual development. So let's shift it a little and go into neutral. Neutral's safe. You can press the pedal, you can hit the brake and nothing happens. You're still sitting there. You know what happens to me, though, if I put off a spiritual decision? More often than not, I end up forgetting what I was deciding on in the first place. I end up convincing myself that I don't need to make a decision. It just becomes unimportant to me anymore. Or I have found a better way to say it. Somebody at the church will take care of that. Do you think God's kingdom is near when we're in neutral? C.S. Lewis and I have had almost the same experience with our mouths. When he was a child, he said, I often had a toothache and I knew that if I went to my mother, she would give me something that would help deaden the pain. And it would, and it would get me to sleep. But I did not go to my mother, at least not until the pain became very, very bad. And the reason I didn't go was this. I did not doubt she would give me the aspirin, but I also knew she would take me to the dentist the next morning. I could not get what I wanted out of her without getting something more, which I did not ever want. I wanted immediate relief from my pain, but I couldn't get it without having my teeth set permanently right. And I know those dentists, I know they would start fiddling around with all sorts of other teeth which had not yet begun to ache. And our Lord is like the dentist, says C.S. Lewis. Dozens of people will go to him to be cured of some particular sin Well, he will cure it, but he will not stop there. That may be all you ask, but if you once ask him to help you, he will give you the full treatment. I got the full treatment. I'm not going to show you my dentures. But it's quite a, an experience to do that. And it's also quite an experience to get the full treatment that our Lord has for us. I used to pray that God would feed the hungry or that God would do this or God would do that. But now I pray that he will guide me to do whatever I'm supposed to do. What I can do. I used to pray for answers. But now I'm praying for strength. I used to believe that prayer changes things. But now I know that prayer changes us. And we change things. So there's a big difference there. And those are the words of a profound lady, Mother Teresa. Hear it again. I used to believe that prayer changes things, but now I know that prayer changes us. 
and we change things. When that happens, we are moving forward. The Australian coat of arms has a picture on it. It's a picture of an emu. I think it's the one they use for commercials now, I'm not sure. And a kangaroo. These animals were chosen for a reason because they share a characteristic. Both the emu and the kangaroo can move only forward and not back. The emu's three-toed foot causes it to fall if it tries to go backwards. And the kangaroo is prevented from moving in reverse by its large tail. Those who truly choose to follow Jesus become like the emu and the kangaroo, moving forward as often as we can and never moving back. I found a little story a while ago that just spoke to my heart. And so I thought in closing that I would share this with you. An old Maeri farmer writes to his son in prison, Kia Ora, my son, this year I won't be able to dig or plant the field with Kamara and potatoes because I can't dig it all by myself. And I know if you were here, you would help me, son. Did I say the son's in prison? The son writes back, Kia or dad don't even think of digging the field because that's where I buried all the money I stole. The police read what the son wrote in the letter, and the next day, the whole field was dug up and the police were looking for the money, but nothing was found. The following day, the son wrote again, now plant the potatoes and the Kamari dad, it's the best I can do from here. Are we doing the best we can from here? I think that's the question. That's the real question today. When I go forward on the golf cart, man, I can just fly. It'll go 13 miles an hour. That's not bad until you hit something. I can clearly see where I'm going. I can arrive faster. I can even feel the wind in my curly locks. Do you think God's kingdom is near when you're moving forward? I do. I absolutely do. So to close this morning, my question is to all of us. What gear is your spiritual life in? Are you in reverse? Are you in neutral? Or are you moving forward? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, Help us to go forward. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together here. Sing our closing hymn. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Give her a reward. So glad that you are with
announcements to make here. Thank you. That was absolutely fabulous. Um, first of all, watching us on Facebook, this kind of sounds funny to say, but let us know that you were here, there by uh, leaving a comment uh, down below the video there. Something exciting starts tomorrow, and it is, it is going to have this building full of energy, plenty of energy. And that is Vacation Bible School. If you know any kids, bring them. You know people with kids, tell them to bring them. Kathy Robertello plans this. And with her in charge, let me tell you what, and with all the awesome volunteers that we have, it's going to be a magical week. So please, 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 let's, let's get all the kids here. Let's get every kid in this county in this building. We'll find a way to do it. Uh, the youth band uh, will meet tonight at 4, and then youth will follow that at 5 o'clock. And I guess they're going to have the 127-yard sale this year. Uh, and it says it, uh, in our announcement sheet, and th their announcement sheet's back in the back there if you want to read through all these things. But uh, Our United Methodist men will be uh, accepting furniture and uh, and they'll also need some volunteers before the sale. And all your donations to the United Methodist Men are greatly appreciated for that sale. Because uh, that money goes for uh, scholarships. Yep, scholarships. Uh, our very hardworking Guatemala team, uh, who Ed Camera is, is uh, very, very involved in that, as are others, uh, they're purchasing 50,000 50, pencils. 50,000. And this is for the mission in Guatemala. 40,000 of these are for the mission in Guatemala. 10,000 of the pencils are for kids here in schools. And they are needed. Believe me, those pencils are needed. 10,000 seems like a big number, but they will go just like that. And the pencils will cost total about $1,750. So we need a little bit of help in paying for those. And if you, if you choose to help, uh, you can write the check out and put the, the Guatemala uh, 2022 pencils in the memo line there so we'll get it to the right place. And of course, these pencils will help those in need in Guatemala and here. And if you have any questions about that, you can ask Ed Kemmer here or give the office a call, give the church office a call. And again... We have a piece of paper back there that's got all the announcements on it. It's got prayer requests on one side of it. Um, so definitely pick that up and read through it so you don't miss anything. Thank you.
I'm kind of short, so I've got the benediction, and we want to thank Brother Dickey for uh, preaching today, and uh, he gave us a lot of points to remember, I guess, to be an emu and a kangaroo, move forward, go, go find your Christian dentist, for one thing, so we just want to, um, let's just keep moving forward, especially as we're in this week of VBS, be sure to invite get excited and let's just be excited for Christ and just spread the love of him around and as we do that we're going to get our mission statement of why we're here why are we here to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of Crossville and the world go in peace go with love amen